What's going on guys, this is Bobby Douglas and welcome to another 2021 NBA Draft Prospect full game video breakdown. Today we're going to be taking a look at North Carolina big man Dayron Sharp. Uh, he was a freshman who's 6'11", I think 285, and just an absolute beast on the glass, averaged around 7 rebounds a game, despite only playing around 19 minutes per game, which is just absurd. Um, very effective, very high motor, high energy, so I'm excited to watch him play, and let's go. He's going to be number 11, I think, in the white. So you'll see him almost grab the tip off right there. But North Carolina is going to get the ball, and I'll circle him once we get the chance. So yeah, 11 right here, kind of in that short corner, getting to that elbow spot with the ball in his hands right now. Um, Dayron Sharp, again, 6'11", 285, kind of just a space eater down low. You know, he's not the most athletic guy, um, you know, vertically, but he's definitely a guy who will bring much needed energy to your team. He will fight for loose balls. He'll get offensive rebounds, get extra possessions for your team. And so I think he does have a place in the NBA, basically on any team, just because of the skill set that he brings. Every team kind of needs one of those, you know, energetic bigs that can rebound, um, defend, block shots, get loose balls, and things like that. So I think Dayron Sharp should be getting late first round looks right now. He's, I think he's 27 on my big board. Um, so right around there, kind of in that late first round area. Um, and again, teams that, you know, are maybe contenders are looking to maybe make that jump and they, maybe they need like a, you know, a secondary big man, you know, honestly, like the Phoenix Suns could really use a day round sharp right now, um, given that a lot of their backup centers are either, you know, not performing well or injured, right? They have DeAndre Ayton, but Sarich is out with the ACL injury and Frank Kaminsky struggled in the time he's been in. Dayron Sharp would help them a lot, right? So I think you can see him kind of the activity right there on the offensive glass. Doesn't get that rebound, but um, you can see the overall effort level that he brings. I think Dayron Sharp is pretty much good for that type of role. He's kind of just an energy big. You can see him out on the perimeter. Has good stance. Not the quickest uh, in terms of his feet, but um, he's definitely a guy that could hang out there on the perimeter at times, um, but I wouldn't really be asking him to do that a whole lot. He's much better kind of on the blocks, in the paint, you know, taking up space, getting rebounds, being physical, and um, that's definitely going to be his role in the NBA in my um, in my view. Um, you can see him right here. UNC, obviously known for their offensive rebounding and kind of, um, you know, I don't want to say like old, actually no, I will say, I'll say like old school lineups, right? They'll go two traditional big men. You can see Dayron right there. Uh, very easy job right here getting the post. So he's on the skinnier Jawan Durham. And Sharp, you know, he's not super quick out in space, but if you get him on the block, he does have an array of post moves that he can get to rather easily. Right here, he's just going to uh, simply catch the ball and then finish around Durham with that little drop step. Easy dunk. He gets the foul as well. And so that's something that I think uh, Sharp can do very well is post up. Obviously, with the way the game's going, you know, we've had these discussions before. How often is he going to be able to get able to post up you know that's always going to be the question um so yeah that's always going to be kind of like an issue with him because like the thing he does best offensively in terms of scoring is kind of becoming less and less valuable as he misses that free throw right there um you know so offensively I'm not really sure how you know uh defined his role will be um in terms of usage he's just going to be kind of a guy that you don't really run plays for him. He just kind of creates his own offense by getting rebounds and putbacks and things like that. Um, so that's kind of how I view Dayron Sharp. Um, he misses that free throw. Uh, Dayron Sharp's not the type of guy that I can see developing a jump shot. He shot, I believe, 52% from the free throw line. Doesn't really have great range um, on any jumper. You can see him battling for the offensive rebounds, though, right here. So again, he's going to go up, miss the first shot, gets good position, right? And again, he's just nonstop energy, getting that tip out, right? Playing some volleyball and ultimately getting that uh, left-handed hook shot to go on his, like, third attempt, right? And so I think Dayron Sharp's just constant, you know, his second effort is always there. Um, you know, not a guy that's going to kind of roll over and let you, um, you know, take advantage of him on either end. And so I think that's something that could be really valuable for a lot of NBA teams, if not all of them. So... Um, right there, that's kind of a good example of what I think Dayron Sharp brings. But um, getting back to my point about the jump shot, I don't really think it's there. Um, you know, obviously things can change. You know, you get a lot better in the NBA. But, um, you know, just in terms of the range that he just showed at North Carolina, the free throws, um, none of it is really that encouraging. So I kind of see him as more of just like a back-to-the-basket type big 
um, slash energy big. Right there, he'll knock that mid-range jumper down. But again, this is from 13 feet, right, I'd say. 13 feet, and that's probably the farthest out he can go comfortably, right? And so again, he had decent mechanics right there. Um, good footwork as well, but I don't really see that being a part of his game long term. Um, you're going to see him on Trey Wirtz. Again, he's not afraid of taking these guard matchups, even though I think in NBA space he might be taking, advan taking advantage of a little bit more often than he was at North Carolina. Um, but I do think he's a guy that can be switchable to a degree. Um, but I do think at the same time, like I think drop coverage is kind of where he would be best at. Um, doesn't have to be a super deep drop like you see Brooke Lopez doing, but um, you know I think just giving the perimeter players so, um, some space in pick and roll I think would probably be his best scheme. Um, but again, he isn't a guy that's just totally on an island on the perimeter. He can definitely hold his own there in certain spots. Um, we haven't seen it yet as we get a charge right here, but Dayron Sharp is probably one of the better passing big men in this year's class. Um, you know, very good block to block passing, um, always has his head on a swivel, looking for the open man, looking for open cutters. We'll see a lot of action where Sharp's at the free throw line and he's just kind of letting cutters go around him. And he's really good at picking out those passes, um, has really nice touch, good feel, quick decision maker, and he's going to contest that three. Not much going on for Notre Dame right there. But we got a steal and a dunk by Nate Lashevsky, who was a guy that a lot of people considered to be a fringe second rounder, um, and then he kind of just fell off. But uh, 2022, he's going to be a senior uh, for Notre Dame this year, and he could maybe sneak his way into a two-way deal, I would say, um, in the near future. But you can see him right here, Dayron Sharp. Again, very good into dribble handoff situations, right? Similar to what we see Bam Adebayo doing with Miami Heat. Um, and he loves being in that kind of free throw line extended area. Again, good effort right there, crashing the glass, calling out defensive assignments, right? Um, you know, the motor that is there, I think the overall intelligence in terms of defense is there. And it's definitely there with the passing as well, as Sharp is going to pick up that loose ball. Let's see what happens here. And again, these are the types of instinctual passes that some point guards don't even make, right? So again, it's going to be a fast break for North Carolina. It's a two-on-one slash two-on-two, right? But he sees Juwan, Sharp has the ball right now. Realizes that he doesn't really have an angle to get it back to Baycott for an easy layup. Probably might, probably gets a charge call right here if he tries to go at Lashevsky, right? He sees Durham trailing, right? And he's able to just hit this gap for an open three, right? And so the shot doesn't go in, but the passing vision is definitely there. And then, of course, he gets the offensive rebound and another really nice pass to Baycott. Again, just a simple, quick shovel pass in the middle of the lane. Easy layup. Dayron Sharp in a nutshell right there. Making the extra pass, picking out passes, finding open teammates, getting offensive rebounds, and then finally finishing with a little bit of a interior pass leading to the layup. Really, really nice job for Sharp on that possession right there. Right there, a little bit caught off guard by that uh, Lashevsky cut. But um, we got an over and back right here. But you kind of just see the appeal of Sharp in that kind of possession right there. But um, this game was in the ACC tournament. Um, so I think it was March 10th, and uh, Sharp's going to finish with 14 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists in 19 minutes, which is like really impressive stuff, and that was pretty much par for the course for him, I minus the assists, but I did pick this game primarily because he is a very good passer, and it's not something that he really gets a lot of credit for because he only averaged around 1.5 assists per game, but his feel for a game in terms of passing the ball is definitely something that I think needs to be established and noticed. And so that's why I'm like, oh, he had six assists in this game. Let's look at this one, you know. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of my thought process. This game, by the way, is Sharp's going to get another post opportunity. But, again, just a really simple, easy pass, right? He's not looking for his own shot. And, again, just sees Dane Goodwin kind of trying to – he's trying to maybe double Sharp right here. And, again, right over the top, easy pass for Kessler. And that's going to be a finish if Kessler kind of knows where that if that's coming, right? Um, you know, he's really good at passing in tight windows, right? Um, a lot of these passes, I, as I mentioned earlier, are block to block um, from paint to the paint. And so just kind of having that ability and that kind of confidence to really get those passes in these tight gaps is something that I think is really impressive. You can see he's looking for um, uh, Walker Kessler in the post, couldn't get it to him. 
And again, North Carolina, very high-low oriented, right? They're playing with two traditional bigs on the same time. And again, another really awesome play from Sharp. Um, but again, they're going to play a lot of uh, high-low, right? Two bigs at a time, whether it be Garrison Brooks, um, Walker Kessler in this case, or Sharp. But just watch this play right here. So it's going to be a miss. Sharp's going to get the rebound, and then it's an immediate pass to Walker Kessler for an easy dunk. Again, just a quick, rapid-fire decision-making that Sharp possesses, um, plus the hustle, the offensive rebounding, the space-eating that he provides. Um, right there, a little bit of a breakdown for North Carolina. But just Sharp has one of the more, I think, defined roles in the NBA. He's kind of just an energy big, someone who gets rebounds, loose balls, can find open teammates, isn't going to be a ball hog or a black hole offensively. And yeah, so that's kind of the book on Dayron Sharp, I would say, is we get a foul here. And I believe, is he out? Yeah, Sharp's going to be out for a little bit right here. Remember, he only plays 19 minutes in this game, but that's pretty much par for the course, as I mentioned. Um, and this game is also going to be one of the biggest blowouts that I think I've ever witnessed live. Again, obviously, I think this is the first Notre Dame game we've done in this uh, in this year's uh, breakdown series. But you can see Sharp right now hanging with Prentice Hubbell uh, right here. So again, it's going to be a pick and roll. And so again, he's embracing the switch, right? He's on Prentice Hub, who's Notre Dame's point guard, moving his feet well. You can tell his technique maybe isn't great, um, but he is kind of just staying in front, you know, and um, doing the best he can, and I appreciate that. We got a miss for Notre Dame. Another miss? Yep, another air ball. Sharp's going to get on the floor, get that loose ball. Is he going to get that? Damn, scramble on the floor, but again, Sharp. Constantly on the floor, constantly trying to get loose balls. You know, that's just kind of his brand. Um, but And then he gets that rebound right there to close out that possession. But this game, like, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it. Notre Dame, or North Carolina, went on like a 42-4 to run. And you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. I think the final score was 101-59, to if I'm not mistaken. And this was in the ACC tournament. Notre Dame, like, you know, I'm a Notre Dame fan, right? I go there. Um... If you guys didn't know, but um, I go there, I'm watching this game in my dorm and I'm thinking like, okay, you know, maybe we could string together a few wins, maybe compete, uh, get to an ACC tournament final four. I'm thinking that's maybe a goal that we could maybe reach, right? Um, they had just beaten Wake Forest on a buzzer beater the previous night and North Carolina just came out and from the jump, just jumped all over Notre Dame. Um, Offensive rebounds were, like, atrociously bad for Notre Dame. I think they gave up close to, like, 25, which is ridiculous, obviously. And so this game just got – it somehow managed to get worse and worse um, as it went on. You know, it was unbelievable. Uh, credit to North Carolina, but it was just a very, very interesting game to watch before I turned it off, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I think that was Garrison Brooks with a nice little turnaround mid-range jumper. As North Carolina takes it, oh no, as Baycott, excuse me. Um, as North Carolina takes a 12 point lead, you can see Sharp on Nate Lashevsky. And again, just kind of calling out, talking, communicating off the ball, right? He kind of chases people around like he's a wing, which I think is pretty cool. You know, he's not necessarily wedded to the paint off the ball like a lot of these bigs are, but also that kind of has to be the case because North Carolina is playing multiple bigs at a time, which is something that you don't really see a lot. Um, you know, at the college level or even the NBA level, right? Um, but I do like that he's kind of willing to chase uh, Lashevsky, who's a known known as a good shooter. Willing to chase him around is right there. Uh, Sharp's going to put Juwan Durham in a spin cycle. Again, very quick out of the post, right? Makes quick decisions, whether it be passing or getting a shot off. Right here, just a quick catch, spin, gets Durham on his back. Easy layup for Sharp. And again, he's definitely a great post player. It's just that I don't know how often that's going to happen for him in the NBA, right? And so that's kind of just the constant, almost debate um, with these post guys, these traditional bigs. Um, you know, how much are they really utilized offensively in terms of scoring, right? And so I tend to like big men being taken in this area in the first round, this like 20 to 35 range, right? Um, you know, that's where I think you could get the most value in taking a guy like Sharp. Um, you know, just because I do think in terms of his overall ceiling and upside, I think he's pretty limited in what he can do. But it's just a matter of how well can he do what he's good at right now, you know. And so that's something I think, um, you know, that'll be worth monitoring. 
because we got a horn set for Notre Dame. Sharp's going to be sticking to Nate Lashevsky. And again, a major block from Baycott. And here comes North Carolina again. Sharp and bad pass from Caleb Love right there. Uh, and you can see they were kind of looking for that in the fast break. Not much going on there, though, so we will skip ahead. You can see Daron Sharp, the little montage that they're giving him. He has eight early points. Again, finishes with 14. We got Sharp again on Lashevsky. Another foul. And you can see North Carolina already has 14 offensive rebounds, right, in the first what, 13 minutes of this game, which is ridiculous, right? They're averaging around a, an offensive rebound a minute. Um, so that's very interesting. You know, and I mentioned earlier how Dayron Sharp kind of is just a glass eater, right? He uh, averaged around seven rebounds a game despite only playing 19 minutes. So that's one of the best, like, per-minute rebounding marks in the country. Um, you can see right there, really nice job from Sharp moving his feet, right? So he's going to be on Dane Goodwin, and he gets switched down to Lashevsky. And again, moving his feet well. He's going to get called for this foul, which I don't necessarily agree with because it looks like Nate just falls down. Um, but again, good job from Sharp moving his feet. I think he does showcase, again, some mobility, but I'm not really sure, you know, how that's going to really translate as the NBA is more spread out, right? He'll get exposed a lot more. Um, but in college, he definitely showed some of the flashes in order to be a switchable big. I'm just not really sure how well that's going to, um, you know... Uh, you know, be applicable in the NBA as we got free throws right here. But again, he's never going to be a guy that is a liability defensively because he's always impacting the game in some way, whether it be on the ball, off the ball, talking to teammates, getting rebounds, getting loose balls, blocking shots, contesting shots, right? Um, I think Sharp airballed that. He may have gotten hit, but it's going to be a Notre Dame ball off the jump. We got another ball screen with Lashevsky. It's going to be a pick and pop. Decent contest. Uh, Sharp kind of got sucked in a little bit right here, right? You can see kind of, um, you know, he kind of has to be in two places at once as Walker Kessler recovers. Um, but again, decent late contest right there. May have gotten away with a foul. That may That's probably called in the NBA. And again, North Carolina running that high-low. Kerwin Walton can't get it to go, but Dayron Sharp is right there. Gets the foul, can't get the free throw to go, but again, just the activity, right? The ability to just carve out space and grab this rebound. And again, he's not the most explosive leaper, but because he's creating so much space by boxing out and using his frame, it almost doesn't matter because he's almost like a Charles Barkley, right? Like, Barkley wasn't the best, you know, uh, leaper, the best athlete, but because he was so wide and so physical, he was able to just get a ton of rebounds, right? Um, same thing with Dayron Sharp a little bit, even though he is 6'11 instead of like 6'6. Six, six. So, um, as he misses that first free throw again, 52% from the line, he's not a good free throw shooter. Don't really see any path, at least any clear path for him to develop any of these jump shots. Um, he's going to miss that one as well. Um, but yeah, so he is kind of, in my mind at least, just kind of like, uh, what you see is what you get type of prospect. And it's kind of weird to say for me, considering he's only a freshman. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of what I'm what I'm seeing. You can see him in the post right here. And again, just really nice job. Again, running the paint, running the floor, right? Carving out space, getting the ball in an advantageous spot. And again, easy layup for Sharp. He's got 10. Are we going to get a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, horns for Notre Dame. Very popular set with them. Sharps on a guard, right? Right there, maybe he's giving up a little bit of space, but again, that's kind of what he has to do. He's more of a contained big, right? In between that deep drop and just playing, you know, very aggressive defense. He's no Kai Jones where he could just play at the level of the screen, right? Um, but he's also not a Brook Lopez, or he's not a, uh, I'm trying to think of another drop big, like an Alperin Shengun is who is a Turkish prospect who I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with. Um, you know, he's kind of in between those two guys, you know. As we got, let's see what we got. Um, yeah. I think he's in for maybe another minute of YouTube time, I want to say. Yeah. 
minute of YouTube time. Notre Dame's going to miss that three. We got another turnover. Nope, not a turnover. Yes, a turnover. There we go. Nice little slip from Cormac Ryan right there. We got Sharp posting up. He's going to get the ball. Again, just kind of looking immediately, just the quick decisions, the quick reactions, right? He's not going to be, you know, backing you down for 10 seconds, you know, trying to get some bullshit shot off, right? He's immediately catching and reacting, right? Whether it be a pass, whether it be a shot, the 0.5 seconds rule, right? Like, get the ball, decide what you're going to do with it in a half second. Dayron Sharp is a clear disciple of that, even though that's not, like, the best pass to make, but North Carolina's spacing obviously isn't optimal, um... It's never really optimal with them, but especially on that possession, everybody was, I think, was inside the three-point line. Um, but not much Sharp can do right there about that. Good job hustling back, even though Kessler's going to get the goal 10 and Sharp's going to go out. But I do appreciate the fact that Sharp is running the floor back on defense. And uh, he's going to go out for a little bit right here. And then he's in at 35-24. So, yeah, he's back in here. Now he is guarding uh, Dane Goodwin, who is a another shooter for Notre Dame, right? Good job re reacting right there, getting um, a wall up on Lashevsky. Again, Sharp's all over the place on this possession. He's, you know, I just want to replay this possession because he was kind of all over the place here, and I think it's a good thing. You know, he's showing that kind of that never-ending mobility, right? So right here, he's on Lashevsky, right, going to wall him up. Dane Goodwin, then now he's just immediately running out to contest Cormac Ryan, right? Ryan actually steps on the sideline right there, classic college basketball play, but, um, you know, just the activity and the hustle, the energy, the effort, right? Uh, Dayron Sharp definitely has all those things. We'll see what we got right here. Again, kind of that uh, pass into a ball screen, and Sharp's going to be the catalyst for that, right? You know, just the pass right on the money, right? Able to take one dribble. Sharp just provides enough resistance on Prentice Hub to get his teammate that open three-pointer. That's Caleb Love, and he knocks that down, right? And so just a guy, we see it all the time, you know, Bam Adebayo and Duncan Robinson, they did it a shit ton. Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero, the Miami Heat, they always ran these. I think, uh, you know, just because I'm a Bulls fan, but uh, Vucevic and Levine did that a lot, right? So Sharp can definitely be a guy you put him out at the top of the key, right? And you could just have cutters and, and you know shooters run around him and it'll work fine. Right there, I think we got a foul, but again, I like the overall anticipation. I want to see if I could time this right. Yeah. So he is pretty late getting off the ground. And again, he's not super vertically gifted, um, but he still is able to get a hand on this shot and it's going to be a foul. Um, but overall, I like the activity and I like the aggression there. Um, you know, recovering from that weak side to contest a shot at least. Um, but with that, I believe that is his uh, last play of the first half. I think he picks up his second foul there. So I'll pause that video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You know, Dayron Sharp is a fun guy to watch just because of his energy and just the passing I think is fun too. So uh, stay tuned for part two. Again, thank you all for the continued support. And remember, we're doing the 17-day sprint, right? We're trying to get through 30 prospects in 17 days to get to 50 for the year, which would be an awesome accomplishment. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys are along for the ride there and, um, yeah, I'll see you for part two, part two soon. Thanks.